Y ahora todo. Nazdar. Ten nějak dlouho? Jo. Riders are passionate, 
They suffer, cry, laugh. <laughs> Real riders know this might be a hobby, but it is the hobby. Real riders either start at dawn or end at dusk. Real riders know when to stop, but always start up. Real riders slow down and lead the way to help a rider. Real riders push harder, climb higher, and try faster. Real riders are not only born to hit the road, they also ride at home. Real riders earn their place in a race. We are real riders. Are you? Hello, dear riders. Very warm welcome and happy Monday. Monday is a rest day usually, right? Um, but we are we are not giving you a break. We are heading to an off season. However, this is perfect opportunity to get you even more entertained and excited for the winter season when you will be riding on your home trainers. And this is where Rauwe comes into play. This is where Rauwe makes your time on the home trainer more fun and entertaining. And the latest feature they have revealed recently is this 360 panoramic view of you riding in virtual reality. Uh, this reality is augmented, as you know very well now. Rauwe carries this pretty heavy library of routes from all around the world. And some of the routes are recorded with this very special 360 view. So you can watch yourself riding from so many different angles. And we will be talking about this new feature, which Ruby calls Omni-Mode, throughout this one hour. This will be a very special opportunity for sharing this moment of th that familiarization with Omni-Mode with very special guests. We will be visiting them shortly in the office, in the head office so for Ruby. We have them all on home trainers getting ready to get started for this group ride. So let's clarify it at the very beginning. This is a group ride, this is not a race. And we have a fantastic ride leader, someone you will want to follow, you would want to follow throughout his career. 17 years on a, pro bi on a bicycle and pro peloton, Markus Burghardt is with us, as well as riders from Specialized Rauwe team. And they will be riding this one hour, well, perhaps it might be a little less, because we are, at the, we are facing 28 kilometers of the ride with 500 meters of elevation gain. It's certainly not an easy ride, and we will get family with the route very shortly. It's a ride which was included as a part of um, stage of Deutschland Tour, Tour of Germany, a very well-known race, which was back onto, into pro cycling in 2018 after 10 years of hiatus. Now it's raising that attention again. And we have chosen this region as to get started with very um, appealing, appealing riding worldwide. You can expect more routes in this omni mode mode. Uh, while waiting, you can still ride at augmented reality elsewhere. And this omni mode will uh, will be presented throughout next weeks. Every week, Rauwe will be presenting new route, and you. We are more than keen to hear feedback of riders, of you riding in this Omni mode and telling us or telling Ruby what they can improve, what can be done better. And for these questions or for this feedback, use that QR code on your screen and send that questions because we have an opportunity to talk with the top guys here in the company. And um, these guys will be actually riding today. The head of IT is on his home trainer, which is also kind of a common thing for um, Ruby employees. That they are not only IT's, IT guys sitting behind a computer, but they are also cyclists. So we will be visiting them very shortly after we uh, introduce you to the route today. We have, again, 28 kilometers to ride at, well, you can choose your pace, but the pace will be set by Markus. Markus Burghardt will be riding as a first, will be heading uh, from Eichstetten am Kaiserstuhl to Breisach. Uh, it's a very appealing region, wine region, fruit region. As I said, this road was included in the in two, uh, in stage of Tour of Deutschland, Deutschland Tour, um, uh, this uh, this year. And from these two hills, which riders will be tackling um, right after first six kilometers, there is first hill, then another hill shortly after. 
and uh, on these hills already Adam Yates was kind of feeling very okay you could have to, you, you could tell and he was heading to the victory on that day and he won overall so this stage was actually crucial for the um, progression of the race so we'll be tackling these two climbs um, this route was recorded this August so you can feel even that the very summer temperatures hopefully you will not get overheated um, take it easy even on the second one which is um, let's say a little easier the first one is the, the hard one that that it's two and a half kilometers but eight percent average the second one is two kilometers seven percent average so it's decent climbing and then we have 10 kilometers to the end it's all flat roads almost like tailwind because we are heading towards French border if you can tell, uh, we are very close to um, German-French border. We are in ba Baden-Württemberg, uh, in a very appealing region, just below Schwarzwald, where that stage of tour of Germany concluded on a, with a mountaintop finish when Adam Yates were, was fastest. So this last section is actually pretty flat, uh, but you will have time to really catch up because, as you well, very uh, as you know well. Um, group riding is one of the greatest pleasures of road cycling, right? You can enjoy the, the, the moments with riding, riding with each other. Obviously, you are back home in your living rooms, but you can now have that feeling that you are almost riding together with Marcus Burghardt. And feel free to ask him questions uh, anytime throughout that, uh, throughout that uh, broadcast. And um, we will be watching Marcus Burghardt pedaling fairly shortly. So see you in a minute in the studio with riders. Hello and welcome well again from the studio of uh, headquarters of Ruby, this app which brings uh, the reality to your homes. Uh, we have the pleasure of riding together with um, very special guests from Ruby specialized team, very talented bike riders who will be on the scene for multiple years since they are uh, already gaining medals um, even on European championships, national championships obviously. The most talented mountain bike racers here in uh, South Bohemia, where we are broadcasting from. But uh, very close to this border, we have um, um, one of the most prolific German riders of all times, one of the greatest, one of the greatest loyal domestics of all times. For 15 times on Grand Tour, right? Uh, around 11 Tour de France uh, races, uh, Tour de France obviously, <laughs> three times Giro d'Italia, one Vuelta Espanya in his still very strong legs so or okay uh, Marcus Burghardt is already a retired cyclist but he can still push pedals hard uh, which he proved uh, only a few weeks ago right H you are now organizing um, a very special German Grand Fondo where your fans could finally ride with you you didn't allow that for 18 years riding your your bike uh, and finally you had a chance to ride with your fans how was it yeah, it was a great event, uh, what we organized in a short time, and for us it's important to uh, give the people the uh, possibility like uh, to ride together and have fun together, have good food and uh, enjoy a good day. How long was it? Uh, we had five distance, 50, 100, 150, 180 and 270 k. You know why I ask, right? 270 k, that, that was the distance you obviously was riding, right? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. This is what I did in the in the Corona time. I tried to challenge my own um, to find a new limit, and I rode 270k in one day. Yeah. So today it wasn't. It will not be that long, all right? Uh, we have 28 kilometers to ride in a region you might know. Uh, it's a 28 kilometers uh, and 500 meters of elevation gain. Um, 
you will set the pace, okay, Marcus? Enjoy the ride with your fans because they are here uh, today with you, for you, to spend the time in the very new virtual reality called Omnimode. And we are uh, on the way. Uh, as I said, just let's clarify it at the very beginning. This is a group ride, okay? It's not a race. It's not a race, ladies, all right? We don't need to push the pedals too, too hard from the beginning. Although, um, we will have that climb coming up fairly soon. That's Schellinger Höhe, that's the name of the first uh, pass, and it in eight kilometers into the ride. It's a climb which is two uh, kilometers long and 8% um, average. So you will feel that fairly, uh, fairly well uh, on your pedals. Most importantly though, play with that views, because this new reality is that Omnimode reality we have been briefly introducing and we will be talking about it throughout this, uh, uh, throughout this broadcast, because it's a cool thing. Um, as you know, Raubi is trying to bring the virtual reality to your home. Um, it's not only about pushing your pedals hard, it's not only about racing your bicycle, although you are obviously here on the bike to train, but it's also about trying to explore new destinations, right? And you can see how beautiful it can be thanks to this 360 panoramic view. Uh, something Rui was working on uh, and is still working on throughout past years and will be working on to improve that rider's experience. Um, we, well, we all know how beautiful it is to ride outside, right? We all want to be out on the bike, but to have a chance to ride somewhere you have never been before, uh, to tackle climbs pros can tackle in the real environment and even feel it on your pedals, that's pretty cool, especially if you have this uh, perspective, just like viewers or spectators on racing. Uh, I said that we have special guests, right? We have specialized uh, Ruby riders, but we have Markus Burghardt, but we have also head of the IT and the man who was actually the one who, uh, yeah, who, who created this idea, right? You, you were the one sitting behind the f computer very first, right, out of this crew. Yeah, it's a long time ago, but yeah, you were right. <laughs> so, uh, obviously, uh, Omni Mode is one of the greatest things you have, right, on Ruby currently, is it? It's right now it's the most uh, the most up to date feature what we have released, and it offers new choices for user options how to how to see on how to ca how to ca how they can feel the route. Uh, during that development, that IT development, how many times you sit on your bike and pedal? <laughs> So uh, my level is 10, so not too often, but intensively. <laughs> Great. Well, that is what what the home trainers are for, right? Just to take advantage of the few moments uh, you have. Um, we have been studying that Omni mode quite a bit, right? We see the riders from behind now from the uh, front view, but also that panoramic view. Um, can you tell us how do you bring these um, these images to uh, to users? So we work uh, on this feature for almost one year and it's completely new technology how we reconstruct routes because we are using 360 degree camera for it and it allows us to create new cameras for back view and also also panoramic view during the ride and even more the completely it's much more realistic because the, the 3d model constructed on the background is much more realistic and the behavior of the riders on the route you can see it you can see them on the much much bigger distance you can see them much more realistic be, uh, behavior of visibility how they how they out hide behind uh, buildings and trees it's more more realistic yeah. that's, that's our main goal to to make it as realistic as is possible so now if we see a car with a panoramic 360 uh, view it's not a google car anymore it's ruby car <laughs> no we have just motorbike and that's uh, maybe one one thing what we considering in future to offer users to create their own route using a 360 degree camera like GoPro Max on, or other cameras uh, which is possible to buy and the price is not so big and even with this camera to put uh, to put camera on your helm we are able to track and create this kind of route even with these cameras yeah. so even riders can get involved in creating this this reality just like in the past but now even that omni mode uh, can allow that potentially yeah 
that's one the way we are considering to to develop and we next next uh, months we will intensively communicate with our community and we are we want to get feedback if they if they really want it or not so you heard uh, you, you heard him that you should ask questions right you, c you should ask questions uh, and basically give tips how to make that riding experience even even better we have a lot of riders it's been 250 riders registered obviously not everyone um, was able to start today right but um, it's a pretty large number and I ha I guess that um, that new feature can even make it more entertaining for everyone not only from that racing perspective, but for, for, from that perspective of being a tourist and trying to see uh, new things, which we are going to see shortly, even on our route, because we are tackling the first, um, let's say, uphill drag towards the first climb. As I said earlier, it's two and a half kilometers long climb, which will start in about 10 minutes. So it's time to yeah, get warmed up. But uh, Marcus is setting a nice space it's not like easy ride after your sunday endurance long distance ride which is something what i would be expecting on monday evening but good good job everyone keeping up with uh, marcus um marcus can you tell me uh how many times do you still get on a bike uh, do you still do this massive crazy 250 kilometers rides in bavaria I actually, if I'm honest, I'm not riding so much because uh, yeah, now it started after my career started at a different time and uh, I have a lot of work. So for now, it's more that I ride my bike if I'm joining event. Yeah. But I hope that uh, in the past, in the future, this is going to change. And uh, mentioning that event, um, do you see this uh, augmented reality, this virtual world uh, helping like the real events like your Grand Fondos to get even more popular and riders trying out the parts of the courses. Yeah, this is a, this is a great uh, opportunity for us because we have the events for the cyclists and we can offer the event then uh, 360 days per year. So they can train, we can make training camps, so we can use this all, all year. Where exactly is that Grand Fondo happening? Is it Bavaria or where is it? Yeah, Schätze Speed is happening in Bavaria, in the middle or between Munich and Salzburg, where you have a nice panoramic uh, view for the mountains and also really nice quiet roads. So that's uh, perhaps a tip uh, for Ruby team to get familiar with these roads there too. Uh, I heard that there are a few other roads prepared for not only Omni mode but um, the augmented reality. You are not putting it on hold, right? You still keep um, augmenting the um, the videos you still have in in uh, in your library, right? Yeah, so normal routes, normal AR routes, not Omni mode. We, they are, we are receiving these videos from no normal users and continue creating this kind of route. For in case of Omni mode route, they in, uh, right now we need to prepare the camera camera capturing by our, by our team so it's it's not possible to just upload uh, their own videos <laughs> how far is it from reality that i will get a camera on my helmet and i will just record it and send it to you and you just make it augmented you just make it in omni mode i mean yeah it, it's uh, if we want to do this way, it's a long of, long of uh, a lot of uh, job before us, but uh, we know that uh, it's possible. So we have to uh, we have to ask users if they are if they want it or not. <laughs> well, it must be appealing even for your team, no? Like one of your employees just takes takes a bike and go for a ride. Okay, uh, like I can understand it's not very comfortable to have a, hel a helmet with a camera, but. It can be pretty appealing. You you might need a new employees for this job, right? <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> All right. Uh, we are about to uh, tackle the first climb. Marcus is in the middle of the group ride. This is one of the features Ruby um, uh, released uh, that the group riding mode allows you to really enjoy the time together, and you are not uh, left far far behind, and you cannot even jump too far ahead and attack in attacking mode. However you feel free to push your pedals hard if you missed your uh, Sunday endurance workout and uh, push that pedal hard on this very first hill. It's one of that more scenic hills on this 28 kilometers long route. 
uh, you are going through wine yards and f fruit, uh, fr f fr fruit yards and um, really enjoying the views uh, just below uh, Schwarzwald, where we will be heading uh, from tomorrow um, with different kind of event. Today we are having a group ride. Yesterday we had a group ride too on German roads. Tomorrow we stay in Germany in Schwarzwald, but it will be uh, race mode. Uh, you can attend races beginning tomorrow, same time for um, European Central Time Zone. You can attend the group ride, uh, I mean the race, at, uh, uh, at six o'clock. One of the features we have been talking with Yuri before, before the broadcast, um, you are working on something very special for viewers to make their ride even more, um, not only realistic, but more comfortable, right? They don't need to uh, switch the views every time they want to uh, change the view on um, on their competitors, right? Yeah. Next uh, next week we are planning to release our new uh, new feature. It's a little bit surprising, but <laughs> it's uh, we are releasing companion app. Which will be not in the f in the next week fully accessible publicly, but but uh, also uh, for our beta testers uh, beta testers group it will be will be possible to download it, and in order to remove control for AR routes to to clear your UI and enjoy fully just uh, just clear video, and it will it's it's really nice feature, and also to remotely switch the camera views for Omni mode. Remotely, which means that you just press a button and you don't need to touch that screen. Yeah, yeah. You had you have to download the root, uh, download the app, and uh, and uh, remotely con uh, control the main application. So this is the wine yards we were talking about. Wine yards where uh, all the racers of uh, Tour of Germany were uh, racing through. Uh, Tour of Germany is. Um, one of the races which are back to professional calendar after a 10 years hiatus and it was actually Marcus Burgard, one of the better, greatest stars on the first renew version of, uh, of Tour of Germany. Uh, you had other successes even in that older version, right? Before ASO took over. Uh, that years when you, when you were really winning races in the beginning of your career. How do you recall these moments? Like, is it something which still gives you goosebumps? Yeah, for sure. If you think back um, uh, of a career of 17 years, you find so many moments uh, where you say, um, I am proud that we achieved this. If it was with Cadell, with Evans, if it was with Peter Sagan, or if it was uh, with Greg Van Avermaet or, or Mark Cavendish, there are many stories what I'm still thinking about uh, now. Uh, just to give you a little bit of perspective, um, Marcus was racing 14 times Roubaix or about around that, right? Uh, one of the greatest classic riders. And if you ever um, turn on TV with the uh, videos from the past years and you see large men <laughs> riding on the cobbles first, that's Marcus Burgha, who was mo one of the most loyal domestics, always very, uh, very nice to media, but also approachable. And um, one of the ones you want to have on a team taking care of everyone. And this is exa exactly what you are doing even after you are carrying with this fan. So chapeau to what you are doing now. Um, obviously, Marcus was leading Peter Sagan quite a few times uh, on the cobbles uh, of Arenberg Forest. Uh, I remember him climbing um, Kaplmoor uh, on the top of, uh, of the bunch, trying to get a, uh, Peter to position. He was leading Mark Avendish in his times in HTC and obviously Greg van Avrema. And you spent 18 years, 17 years in uh, pro cycling. If you could name, well, there is no way you can name one moment, right? Or is it? No, the, for this, uh, we had too many, too my, many is nice success, but for sure, um, when we won 2011 with uh, Cadell, the Tour de France was a special moment because um, it's hard to get into the team, of, uh, in the tour team, and then even to win the race with Cadell is something uh, really unique. You know what's special about this? Uh, this kind of speaks about Marcus' um, character. Um, he is a winner of Tour de France stage. You would expect him telling like, winning Tour de France stage, that was a special moment. Instead, he says that 
<laughs> helping Kettle, Kettle Evans to win to the France is special. Um, yeah, that's very special, Marcus. That's very special. Um, so back to that um, Grand Fondo you are uh, organizing now, Shades of Speed. That's the name of it. It sounds like you are trying to think back into your racing career. So where is, where is the name coming from? Yeah, because uh, for me it was always I was taking the big leader um, into the slipstream, into my shade, um, that they can save a lot of energy. And uh, now I want to give this opportunity to the cyclist out in the world to have the same feeling. How many cyclists out of the world did you have this year? Uh, was it a very international event or was it mostly uh, Germans? Um, was mostly German, but was uh, from all parts of Europe. We had starters, and uh, we had in the first edition, we had 1,400 uh, people on the event. Wow, it's not you reading through the registrations, right? You must have a team t taking care of it, but I guess you are routing, no? You are uh, giving advices where, where the uh, routes are going, even the short and long routes. This is all coming from your head, uh, all the routes you have in your mind? Yeah, the routes were quite easy because I, <coughs> I just took the roads which I always used when I went for training because I was always training on nice, quiet roads. So this was easy to find the route. Yeah, well, it's not that easy for this Omni mode or this augmented reality because to record such a you know, video, you cannot have cars uh, there, right? You always have to choose a very special day in your, uh, I mean, time frame in your day to record anything which is which is usable, especially towards the steepest parts of the climb, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right, I give you a break, right? <laughs> Maybe it's a good idea to. To have a break to talk. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess that you usually need some drinks here. Um, yeah, I, I should have a drink too. Uh, but perhaps afterwards, I am actually, I was considering riding, but watching you, yeah, it's steep, right? <laughs> All right. But I guess that ladies are doing very well. Marcus suffers a little bit, but not too much. Yeah, shades of speed are still almost at the front, in the middle of the group. And we are almost tackling the. Uh, top of the first hill is Schillinger uh, It's a hill which is not that significant, uh, but it's a nice way to start with this ri riding in Omni mode that we are not tackling straight away the biggest alpine passes. Also, because of the phase of the re of season we are now um, going into, right? Now we are about to um, get kind of like an off season kind of flatter routes, right? We don't need to. Um, climb the biggest passes straight away but if you still are keen to race remember that there is a way to connect to uh, Ruby race tomorrow and day after tomorrow and there are so many events you can find on Ruby app not in that Omni mode m m mode just yet not using this feature but still plenty plenty of racing available if you are keen to race throughout the uh, winter season uh, would you be keen to race throughout the uh, winter season, Marcus? I remember you were riding cross bike, right, throughout the s uh, throughout winter. Yeah, I mean the season uh, when you start training again before uh, this part is quite long. So, um, and if you do one or two times per week, one uh, cyclocross race, um, it just makes you stronger for the for the season. Yeah, but not not an intensity like this, right? Yeah, it's it's deep. I can I can tell. Yeah, but everyone is doing very well on this on this group ride. We will be uh, slowly getting towards the end of the first hill. Um, it feels kind of longer than usual uh, than on in reality. That's because. You always need to keep in mind that you are overheating a little bit. Uh, using fans is very recommendable for your home training. Um, so I guess that all your riders, all riders are using something. Keep drinking, all right? We don't need any uh, accidents here uh, on this one hour ride. It's almost uh, 150 meters in your legs already. Uh, well, not yet, 100 now and you will be tackling the second one which is easier so that might give you a little more motivation the second climb uh, to, uh called texas pass that's a climb which is two kilometers long have you ever been riding in this area or do you remember riding in this area 
Yeah, Texas buses actually was uh, many, many years ago. It was part of uh, Regio Tour, was it called? It was a, a race of five days down in this area. And the uh, last stage was always up the Texas Pass. We did three or four loops there. And this was always the final of the race. Yeah, well, I can imagine you are remembering all the routes everywhere. But uh, as I said earlier, Marcus is well known also for uh, memorizing the roads, especially in, in this Bavarian region uh, where he currently lives, although he comes from Saxon, right? That's where you are coming from. Uh, so he made a long way to southern Germany, but it's not that far from here either. All right, so riding towards the end of this climb, or this steeper section, that, that was 12% in maximum, if I recall well the, the profile. The Schellinger was the f were the first two climbs on this, uh, this year's Deutschland Tour. Uh, Tour of Germany is getting bigger every year, uh, getting back to their to the like let's say forgotten history uh, 10 days long uh, stage race which was always riding um which was always happening like in june right that was the original original dates of uh, tour of germany now it's august it's kind of preparation for um for vuelta so um y y when you were attending that or riding uh, in 2018-19 this was a preparation for you, or was it something you were keen to do also just to remind yourself to uh, f German fans? No, it uh, was, was not just for preparation, <coughs> because um, for this it was too important for us, um, for Columbia HTC, and uh, we really went there to get the best result out, and that's what we also did. We won, I uh, think, five or six stages, and took first and second in Chizzy. Well, yeah, that's that's really um, proving only how prestigious that race was. It was one of the most prestigious after the Grand Tours, right? Before, before it all went backwards. Um, all right, guys, we are uh, tackling the final and easier part of the uh, of the climb. That Schellinger Höhe. So enjoy riding with Markus, especially downhill. You will not want to follow Marcus downhill. He was also considered one of the best bike handlers uh, in the pro peloton. That's why he was always on the front of the cobbler sections. Uh, this downhill is not really, really technical. But what do you enjoy most, please, is that omni mode. Uh, try to switch to the view when you are watching yourself from the front and you will be riding through that um, uh, curves and uh, your avatar, your rider, will be leaning towards the curves, which is very special about this omni mode feature too and just enjoy riding with your teammates there are plenty of your of your teammates on this group ride uh, there is no s coffee stop planned on this route uh, we will still need to tackle one more so on that downhill section remember to reach for a for a drink and uh, we'll uh, see you in a bit after shore downhill So guys, we are back to studio just to re remind ourselves uh, what is Omnimode, uh, just to remind ourselves what, the what we have just seen. And I have the pleasure to have uh, a friend and teammate from Ruby team uh, who uh, presents this Omnimode to you. And we have been talking to Yuri, but if you had hard times hearing him just because he was pushing pedals hard and uh, out of breath, uh, it's a good opportunity to remind ourselves what is Omnimode about. 
uh, we have heard that uh, it allows us to see uh, yourself from different angles, most importantly the countryside. What brought your team to this idea to present something, um, yeah, I want to say special because it really gives something very, very different to your current augmented reality. Thanks, Martin. Uh, well, you know, I would say it's exactly what Ruby is about. It's uh, bringing uh, the reality uh, to your home, uh, to bringing, you know, the, the experience which you can have outside, outdoors, indoors. <coughs> I'm sorry. So that's why Omni mode actually exists and what defines Ruby, um, uh, w what it is. So it's not only only about uh, really different point of views, but um, to bring uh, experience from outdoors inside. That's what I would say. You know, it's uh, it's why we chosen this direction. What uh, we want to be our signature when someone is talking about Ruby. Uh, so you know, so they have the first first uh, uh, my first sort of you know thing in in their mind. Uh, you know, like it's uh, it's complicated to to re to record such a video, which is usable for your guys behind the computers, right? The programmers are uh, having hard times anytime they are um, trying to read the video. Um, what is the if if a writer wants to if anyone, if a user wants to bring the video or give you the video of Home Ride, uh, how the video would need to look like so your team can work on it? So we we not there yet. So as as of today, it needs to be someone from our team who records, uh, who makes the video uh, using uh, special professional 360 degree camera. However, we are on the mission to make it available to the to the broad public. Uh, so at the end of the day, it'll be back to the times when when you need GoPro camera mounted on, for example, on on, on a helmet uh, you are wearing. And you know, so in this case, you can video record. Um, the, the course by yourself and then we can broaden the um, sort of offer uh, what, what we have but as of as of now as of today uh, we have around 10 uh, 10 courses uh, eight 10 courses available uh, on our on our app uh, and um, during the next weeks and months we'll be launching every week uh, another and, and the new ones uh, hopefully next next year uh, first first half of the next year we would be able to to offer this also to our um, experience writers who are already making great great videos and helping us uh, to to have a broader offering for for all of you can you tell us a little, little can you give us a hint uh, where, what destinations you are going to present to your to, to the users obviously being kind of passionate about riding anywhere in the world uh, I guess that everyone wants to know where they can ride in Omni mode and can really see all the countryside around so as of today currently we are staying in europe so after germany uh we want to uh go a little bit more south uh, to the italy uh so we have uh, awesome routes from from the toscany uh and the next uh, we also want to go beyond and uh, uh, visit other uh, other regions uh, uh, also, you know, from Asia Pacific. So we have uh, some some courses from uh, from Japan uh, being uh, prepared, um, and also from uh, from other other cities and, and countries. On the other side, uh, it's still a little secret. So stay stay tuned and uh, uh, watch out. Uh, that's the that's the real thing with augmented reality. Uh, I was myself riding very exotic places in um, where I would never e even travel. Uh, which brings your community quite together, right? This is very special about uh, about Ruby. Um, y I know you are saying that, that you don't want people to just stay indoors, but that's to me the greatest advantage of riding Ruby, that you are basically exploring other destinations from your own living room, but also just giving you kind of an exercise. Um, what we have seen just now in that studio your guys are, are riding too. Like all of you, you are cyclists uh, working for Ruby too, that you want to explore new routes or how comes that the library is just insanely wide? Like you have such a wide library of routes. 
It would be it would be very ambitious to say that all of us are <laughs> are, are cyclists, but I would say majority of uh, of uh, people working uh, within you know the the, the Ruby company are cyclists or triathletes. We have even you know very uh, very high level athletes uh, uh, within within our team competing and very 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 high level. Um, you know, but at the end of the day, it's. Uh, um, me, for example, in my case, being father of two, right, uh, having little time, I also, you know, really enjoy the fact that I can jump on a bike, having, you know, 30, 40 minutes twice a week, and I, I don't have the luxury to spend, you know, four hours, three hours on the bike. So from this perspective, this is something, you know, what we living, this is our daily, daily life, and we also want to offer to, to, other, uh, to others. And uh, people from all around the world helping us with the videos. That's why even the Omni mode, which, you know, is being one of our key initiative and key, key feature, we want to extend to the, to the public, to, to other riders, to be able to, uh, to broaden, broaden the, um, the offering. Uh, w within this week, we are visiting um, Germany, obviously. We are visiting this region for these two, two uh, group rides yesterday and today with Markus Burgard. Tomorrow we have a race in Black Forest, day after tomorrow too. Uh, we are visiting this region. Um, are there any reasons why you are choosing these regions? I recall that you presented Roots uh, together with Vuelta España last year, right? And even two years ago. Uh, wh where is that cooperation coming from? Where is well that's cooperation coming from so one one of our main theme is uh, you know feel like a pro or being like a pro so uh, you have the chance from uh, from warmth of your home uh, to try these routes which are being part of the grand tours or you know very very important races such as uh, such as Deutschland tour which is you know our our long-term partner uh, and we want to digitize the specific parts of these courses and make them available uh, for the uh, weekend warriors. Uh, so you can uh, you can get the feeling how the first hill actually tastes like, right? Uh, I could I could really feel it that it was um, that was tough uh, when I when I when I saw like 16 16 person. That, that that's very tough. So uh, yeah, as you mentioned, you know, Vuelta España is one of our our key partner uh, from the triathlon triathlon perspective. Challenge Family uh, as being one of our key partners. So we have most of uh, uh, of these races uh, available on our platform. Uh, so feeling like the pro, but in the same time being able to travel the world. That's probably you know, the answer. Yeah, and even you are inspiring like really prolific racers from past, right? Markus Burg Burghar being um, one of the greatest example. Uh, so I guess you are bringing uh, cycling somewhere else, somewhere where n nobody has ever think it could go few years ago right this business was very very little and currently we have thousands and thousands of people uh, riding every day right you can connect anytime anywhere uh, on the world and you will always meet someone so this is very special so thank you Jaco. thank you very much so guys we will be heading back to the studio real riders are happy they suffer, cry, laugh. Real riders know this might be a hobby, but it is the hobby. Real riders either start at dawn or end at dusk. Real riders know when to stop, but always start up. Real riders slow down and lead the way to help a rider. Real riders push harder, climb higher, and try faster. Real riders are not only born to hit the road, they also ride at home. Real riders earn their place in a race. We are real riders. Are you?
So gentlemen, I don't mean to interrupt your conversation, but I see you breathing after uh, after the second climb, which was the easier one. Was it really easier or not really? Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, it hurts. It hurts, obviously. But fortunately, we have plenty of uh, drinks and fans here, so that helps a little bit to get over uh, this very last um, uphill section, which first riders are actually tackling already. Uh, we are... Uh, getting closer to the French border, to the Valley of Rhine. It can be pretty windy there, but uh, it seems like you have chosen the best day to record such a such a beautiful video with the wine yards on on both ends. And uh, yeah, only one thing, as Marcus mentioned, it would be cool to have that stop at a coffee shop somewhere. Um, you know, that would be actually a great um, idea to add even like a advice where to turn. Where is the best coffee shop in the area? Yeah, definitely it's possible to, to do it. But <laughs> but everybody should after that will stop and don't don't continue the <laughs> paralleling. <laughs> yeah, but not only the coffee shops, right? Well, I don't e I can even name uh, bakeries and so on. No. I mean uh, more like the, the, the iconic places riders want to see, right? Uh, riders are usually taking vacation in cycling prolific areas. That's exactly where you have many routes in augmented reality. Uh, how complicated it would be to just give a rider a feeling that he or she really knows where he or she is going to. Where are all the climbs, famous cities around? How complicated this would be? Yeah, that's our, our idea, to, uh, idea to continue in development with Omnimode, is to place into video or panorama all climbs around you or cities or every geolocated uh, items which will be with, with some description and <laughs> make user make makes for users something like 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 guide and inform user about the area and uh, and uh, uh, and the uh, nearest places interesting places so on this route it would be obviously these two climbs which uh, Marcus is about to tackle right uh, yeah even a little more i guess Marcus Two or three more pedal strokes, all right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because there I actually started um, my professional career because when we did this, we did this race with the national team under 23, and there was all the professional teams were there. And at this race, you could perform good, or you had to perform good, that you get a, a place in a professional team. And uh, th there I took the chance. <laughs> well, how how does it remind you these ages? Like it's 25 years ago, right? No, it's like uh, it I did this, this exactly this climb. I did the last time 2004. And I, I still remember this point because when you were here, you saw the good riders already up there. And there you know, okay, these are professional and I am still under 23. Well, it didn't took you lo too long, right? Like it was only two more years, and you were with T-Mobile, so it wasn't too too bad, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it's a great it's a great opportunity to really catch up with places you might have been even riding in, and uh, you don't even know that you uh, that you remember. Um, out of all the destinations, if we were talking about Ruby offering you this opportunity to ride world anywhere. What what destination out of that exotic places stick to your mind? Like you have been riding all continents, right? So which which place would be the one you would even come back to consider coming back to and ride your bike? Is there any? Yeah, for sure. Um, I think I don't want uh, to go back like to Giro or Tour because um, often the memory is not so good when you were suffering on these climbs. But I had nice time uh, in South Africa, for example, for training camp. And this would be something uh, what I would like to write, that you get back the memories. Well, South Africa, it's a place where uh, all this connection with uh, Village Brothers is coming from. Uh, Village Brothers are your... Um, I mean, Martin and Peter, they are running this um, uh, cycling clothing brand Isador you are ambassador with, right? And. Uh, I know that they actually grew up in South Africa and they were saying the same thing, that South African cycling is actually very good. Yeah, for sure. And uh, for sure, it's uh, you have the, the dangerous part, 
but uh, beside this you have a really nice countryside and uh, people are super friendly out there and uh, yeah you can find some really good uh, roads there also uh, you know, like you mentioned, like Giro Tour, even South Africa, but even the uh, exotic places. Um, you have been to Australia racing, right? Is that is that a place you would go back to? Or because there are few augmented routes there too. For sure, it's, uh, I stayed only in, uh, in the area of Adelaide, always because there was the Tour down under. But uh, Australia is big, and uh, for sure you can go for some nice rides there, and definitely. Um, to go for New Zealand, this I would like to do. Um, out of that European passes, I know that you have you have everything in memory, and um, Ruby has, I guess, all of them in the library. Um, do you can you tell which is the favorite one? My favorite one, for sure, not Motirolo, where you go uh, ten or twelve k average of thirteen uh, percent or something. Now I like uh, a lot the uh, Stavio. Stavio is one of my favorite because it's a tough climb from both sides and uh, you have a great view and a great feeling when you are standing up there on 2,700 meter. Yeah, they are fantastic passes also in Switzerland. You were racing Tour of Switzerland a few times, right? As a prep for, for the Tour. Uh, all these like Grimsel Pass, Furka Pass, it's not, it's not where you would want to spend your vacation anymore. Maybe yes, because now you have the chance to go your your own speed, and I, like you said, I did this race always for preparation for Tour de France, but you never saw the real countryside and the landscape because you was always looking to to your power meter, and we are suffering, so there was no time to look right and left, and now is the time to go back there and enjoy the ride and look to the country. You don't need to, Marcus. You just load to Ruby and you don't need to even travel. <laughs> no, yeah, it's obviously one of the recommendation we would like to give to everyone. Just if you don't have time to travel and go there, it's just um, that library in Ruby is massive and you can really choose any place. Now, even Marcus uh, climbed uh, the second big mountain and you can enjoy the, uh, enjoy the downhill a little bit. You can enjoy the drafting mode of obviously that's one of the cool features and even like key features how to race bikes um in this virtual reality uh do you have do you know anyone who is racing um in virtual reality on zwift or ruby do you know a few riders who who um really enjoy racing yeah for sure then the last years the the professional we are using uh, the virtual rider riding more and more because uh, it is more attractive than uh, riding uh, without in the in the basement so this um, gives you the possibility to that the time is uh, running a little bit more faster um, and you have some uh, entertainment yeah, I remember even Jay Vine coming to Pro Ranks just thanks to riding in virtual reality so so well, right? Uh, you mentioned that um, long climbs and um, that European mountain passes. Um, you have never been like a super strong climber, obviously, right? You've always been, always been the classic rider. How comes that you, you have never had a time to really look around, even if you already weren't racing? Uh, I, I realize that it's not really like a group riding. <laughs> in uh in the bunch but it's not like super super on the limit is it no for sure not but it's uh you still have the riders next to you and uh, you have to be focused because uh, you're still going on 20 25k per hour and you have fans uh, around you what uh, is not giving you the same if you're alone on a on a pass so but um, I mean, it was still a good time. I still, I, every time I enjoyed to ride the Tour de France, especially with all the spectators, because this is a, a feeling what for me now will not come back again. That uh, I climb, uh, uh, I don't know, I climb Galibier or I do Alpe d'Huez. Now there will be nobody anymore. And in the past, there were 100, 200,000 people um, cheering for you. Yeah, that's 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 a special uh, special experience only reserved for uh, pro riders. Uh, but it's it's getting closer to uh, spectators. You can always come and see the riders on the roads too. And now you can even ride in virtual reality. Um, 
you know like you have been talking a lot about about the um opportunity to ride with greatest cyclist i guess that also while climbing you were dropping with sprinters quite a bit and getting them back to the bunch after the or uh, during the descents uh do you recall any crazy crazy descents with calf on your wheel or anyone like that uh, actually, I was uh, always trying to get ahead of Bernie Eisel and Mark Cavendish because they were going a different speed in the, in the downhill. So if I would have uh, come to the top with, together with them, for sure they would have dropped me and then I would have been alone behind the Gruppetto. So I always tried to stay ahead of them that they were catching me then from behind. Well, uh, also like going through few teams not too too many right yeah like you weren't on too too many teams but you were on a few and you were changing your teammates quite often um, obviously you are racing with your teammate one year and then you are racing against them next year is this coming very naturally in the pro ranks or you just had to get used to it how, how does you how does it feel like pushing someone with elbows throughout the races uh, uh, someone you were wa working for last year yeah, for sure, it's uh, in the beginning a different feeling, but I mean, you're a professional, you, you know what is your job, and honestly, if you have uh, a guy next to you who you were um, sharing the room the year before, um, you are not going to give him a big elbow, for sure not. And you are seeing this quite often now when you are watching races, or are you watching races? Do you see any differences to the years you were racing? Yeah, I still I still follow the racing because uh, it was for 25, 30 years. It, wa uh, it was my passion or is my passion. And I still like to see what the guys are achieving now, especially the young guys. The sport is getting quite uh, young and a lot of uh, talents have a big success with, uh, with young age. And this is nice to see. And I still have uh, many colleagues in the race, uh, what I was sharing rooms, what I was in the team together, and I follow up what they are, what they are doing now. And even the youngsters, like if you were racing in junior rings and you were riding, uh, well, not only these throws, but uh, are you following like really young races and trying to get involved in, in this like really development of road cycling? I mean, the development is now part more of the teams. This is also something what changed in the time that you have now more um, scouts in, in all the professional teams who are looking into this. The, the young, they take the young riders for tests. This you didn't have uh, when I started. They just looked for the result. And now they ask them to write a test. They see the numbers, how they perform. And then they maybe give them the chance to get professional. Well, there are a few, right? Like the new talents in that young age. Um, yeah, well, th there are th these obvious talents, but it seems to me that the sport is getting much younger compared to the previous years. And I guess that everyone is struggling to understand what is the reason behind it. The reason is also because the, the teams, they have uh, the rule from the UCI that they have to make um, a woman team or they have to make an under 23 team in the World Tour. And this is then also the reason that they have the guys already in their um, teams, in their under 23 teams or junior team. And uh, if they see, okay, the guy has talent, then they take them more early up to the professionals because then they can build them f with their plan step by step. And do you think that they are able to manage that long careers too? No, I think this is, uh, I'm pretty sure that this is not possible um, anymore that the guys then stay 17, 18 years professional because the, the racing changed, the training changed. It's much more stress for the riders. And uh, I'm sure that this is not possible to keep this for such a long time like I did. Well, so you were the pure talent then. They just picked you because you were winning races when you were junior yeah i w in my time you got professional with results because there it was not uh, the i think training peaks was not even existing that time or for sure not so you had to look for the results and uh, but 
this is uh, now you can control this much more better and uh, it's also on the end the good riders always get uh, professional well n now i am pretty sure that even you will have a uh, kind of a responsibility for more German riders becoming professional if you are organizing this fr Grand Fondos. I guess that they will be keen to talk to you and get some inspiration just like everyone is just now doing. I remember Cadel Evans setting up the, his Grand Fondo when he retired and he inspired many, not only by as achieving um, that Tour de France title, but also just being approachable and kind of like helpful to, to everyone. So that's the great thing of you guys think in the sport and just not really disappearing after finishing your career now this is the this is the point because we were traveling so much like i was uh, 260 days per year i was not home and for sure i got many requests of people who asked marcus can we go for a ride together um and uh, there was uh, there was definitely no i wanted to do but there was not the time and now I have the time, and now I wanted to give back to this for my fans. Now they have the chance, and it's not only me. I had the uh, Olympic champion from the winter sport at the event. I had Kreipe on my event, and uh, this we will build up more for the next year to bring more professionals. Well, and you can bring more even if you if you ride. Um, if if the riders can try parts of the routes do you already know the date for next year's next year's grand fondo or it's not announced yet now we will announce this uh, next week but uh, we will change the date from september we will because this year we had uh, six degrees rain and uh, for the next year we will go into the summertime so i guess that's a um, kind of yeah invitation for uh, next year's group ride where you can spend time with Markus Burkhardt and many other um, just this is the reason why we ride on bikes right that group riding is that brings the greatest pleasure of road cycling and I hope that we have been able to just entertain you a little bit a little bit throughout the group ride because this is what it is about it's not about racing all the time but it's also about uh, trying to catch up with your friends and someone who inspires you to um, to really reach um, even a little further, not only with your physical skills, but also bike riding skills and trying to just be better cyclist as a as a cyclist. How does it help to you, Adela? Does it help uh, with your group riding, watching your avatar on the screen? Uh, how how does it work for you today? Yes, I uh, think it's very amazing and interesting because this is my first uh, opportunity Right with Rovi. Oh wow, this is first time for you, all right. Yeah, pretty cool, pretty cool. Uh, just reminder, Adela is under 23 national champion marathon, so she knows how to ride a bike, but first time drafting on, in virtual reality. How does the drafting work? Uh, yeah, uh, very good works. Well, yeah, I, I sh I'd better try this a little bit. Yeah, the drafting is one of the key features too. Like you can really enjoy yourself on riding downhill. Um, uh, if if you reach the downhill, obviously. And Irko, how does it work for you today? I guess that you were behind the computer uh, all day long and now you are watching your avatar. Did, did you try that remote control? And are you trying? How does it work? Or how do you, do, you, do you actually enjoy or you are actually trying to improve things while riding? <laughs> All together, uh, I am enjoying it too much because it's a little bit different view. If you can clear the UI and, and enjoy just the video all time, it's uh, yeah. It, for me, it it makes sense. <laughs> so uh, if you clear that the screen, you basically turn off all the features and you can really enjoy the views. That's the that's the idea behind it. That's the idea behind to enjoy the full video and only on the mobile you have uh, nearby you you can remotely control it and and see the metrics on the screen instead of the instead of the uh, big screen where you have a video instead of this this metrics so the perfect setup for like using this remote control operating the screen would be just phone mount phone holder on your s handlebar so you don't need to reach anywhere and just like 4k tv or what is the perfect setup you can even set up the the ride before you can sit down on the bike and set up select the route and remotely start on the application and without 
any uh, any touch of the computer or Apple TV. Yeah, this is one of the key features just to watch uh, from the front. Um, and you have actually three views, right? From the back, from the front, and then the other uh, view is just giving you that panoramic view, which kind of reminds me if you were standing next to the road as a viewer of a spectator, as a spectator of a race, this is what you will see, right? Um, so even for bike racing, I mean, for virtual racing, this must be key feature for bringing even spectators to virtual racing, right? Yeah, it's similar like uh, like streaming from the races for, uh, in TV. It, it's to to make this opportunity for other spectators to 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 look on the race in this uh, in this kind of view. I w I wonder if anyone is actually really riding a bike, racing uh, home, and family watching. That could be the case, right? Like they can watch from the living room, and the uh, uh, father can pedal in the cellar. Yeah, the kids can sh look on their father. If it, the pace is okay, or <laughs> and, and yeah, that's one of the cases. Yeah, how how entertaining for the kids, right? <laughs> yeah, for a little bit. Uh, so we are about to reach the very final approach to finishing down uh, Brysac. That's on the French uh, French border. Um, this road wasn't really very very interesting in that third stage of tour of Germany this past year. But this was where Adam Yates was kind of getting uh, getting rid of the first fatigue on the first two climbs and heading towards the first uh, like real uh, mountain top finish in that edition. And he uh, ended up winning all the tour, uh, tour, um, tour of Germany edition this year. Um, Adam Yates was riding for Ineos at the time. Obviously, he's now signing up with another team. So let's see how he managed that rivalry with... Um, um Tadej Pogacar, well, let's let's see how how this helps. Uh, Tour of Germany is obviously moving, uh, so I guess that the next step would be bringing more routes uh, from from this particular race. Or are you looking into any other races and cooperation with other races and just bringing uh, perspective um, or even experience to the users from other European pro pro cycling calendar? So I don't know exactly the the pro cycling calendar and uh, and <laughs> events what we plan to capture, but for Omni mode routes for for this case, we have a lot of material already prepared to to release routes um, up to end of the year. So every next year we will release next uh, next route from Toscany. We plan to release routes and also from uh, from famous parts of Alps like. Uh, Stelvio already is there, Gavie, so we plan to release more this this kind of climbs. Well, the more climbing, the closer we will be getting back to the season. But now it's time for kind of an off-season, although uh, it's it's actually first training camps happening already. And um, riders are getting ready, so the climbs will be handy. So just you can kind of enjoy the intensity of uh, riding, riding in long alpine climbs. Uh, this actually is interesting on the screen. I'm just watching uh, with Yuri Samek the, uh, the screen. Um, obviously, you have uh, cars on the route, right, when you are recording. Is there any way you can get rid of it or uh, there is that, that would be like way too complicated from the video? Yeah, right now, it's still the complication and it's no way how to remove from video. Even we are trying a lot of ways how to do it, but still it's there. <laughs> And the other riders, I have seen that it was a like a lady riding city bike on one of the climbs in that in that video. It's actually pretty fun, right? So, uh, as I said, like next time you will see 360 camera on top of motorbike. It's actually Ruby. So just wave to the camera, and you will be forever in Ruby library uh, in <laughs> in the route. Yeah, that that could be a massive achievement. Yeah, but. But uh, your face you will not recognize because we because we do anonymization like we had to have to do. <laughs> so, oh yeah. So you you need to mark or anonymize even the plates on the cars and everything needs to be according to the law. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Especially Germany because you cannot even look uh, at street view in Germany except a few places, right? So the 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 
the rules there in Germany might be must be pretty strict for this, right? I, are there any differences, or do, does your team need to study uh, even the traffic rules there? Yeah, we have lawyers to to know our. Or uh, every country have some st some some uh, statement for what what is necessary to do. So we have everything do <laughs> what is necessary. <laughs> yeah, because you are also using drones and other other uh, devices to just capture, right? So uh, I realized that flying drones is not really um, always allowed everywhere. So yeah, it's a l it's a lot of work certainly uh, creating that omnimo. Right? It's certainly worth it because uh, you can really enjoy this. Back view is probably the most um um wanted from the from the riders right they w they w they will want to look back where is where are the other riders chasing them down during races and even during the group rides right yeah for now i think that it's it's most visible the, the most visible feature f uh, in omni mode the rear view and panorama view but also the the quality of the trajectory and uh, the way how you can feel the resistance in on your trainer and how d how detail uh, how much detail we tr track the slope changes it's really a lot of important feature which is not so visible but important in reality and how users can feel the the slope changes uh, on, on trainer yeah that was the most interesting thing for me even trying it out how realistic it can be on that steep slopes and everyone knows th noticed that even even today during the ride uh where we had 250 registered riders and it's going to be a little more i guess for tomorrow's race when we are going to tackle the two races in uh, black forest to tomorrow and day after tomorrow uh i noticed that there is a maximum capacity in each uh, event right uh, there are 500 uh, registered riders allowed for each event uh, is there any chance you could go above this number for the future we are look continuously looking on the on this number how many racers are already registered and how is capacity and we uh, we always increase the <laughs> capacity to be able to connect more people because as usual they are like registered um, some hundred of people and only half of them really connect and and uh, and right well so there is no real limit to like how many attendants can attend so let's say if you organize the group ride with marcus in bavaria like let's say following his shades of speed race i mean group ride how many attendants he can get even virtually there is no limit last uh, two last year we had uh event where, where it was uh, more than 100 1000 people connected really connected people so we are prepared for a lot of <laughs> big number well so that that might be an opportunity marcus right just bring more people <laughs> to cycling even virtual i i guess that not, not everyone can travel all the way to germany from other sides of the world uh, when i was studying the countries of registered riders even for this group ride there are riders from korea japan like every day you have riders from all, all around the world this must be um it, it must be entertaining just to watch and kind of motivating for you right yeah all day <laughs> i think we, we had to plan the group rides for all the world so different time zones yes it's difficult to plan it but it's necessary <laughs> So you are planning group rides for even United States Canadians. They are they have their own group rides, so they can ride not in the middle of the night. Yeah, yeah definitely, because there will be nobody in the United States. <laughs> well, so that's the case even obviously for um, for tomorrow, because the race will be happening tomorrow uh, in Black Forest, and uh, there are four races actually tomorrow. So we accommodate or we accommodate uh, the. Um, the different time zones. So you is al already in in the finish, which kind of describes why he is so sweaty. Um, and we will we will head back to uh, the end of this of this ride. Uh, the ride ends kind of in the middle of nowhere, just before the the uh, ride and um, reaches the town, which kind of again describes how complicated it is to record. Right? There there is a reason why you don't go all the way to the city with the with the video because it gets messy right you have traffic you have people r running around 
Yeah, definitely the best the best locations to tr to make uh, routes and, and capture routes with video is some some isolated areas <laughs> outside of the outside of city. Yeah. But in future we are we are preparing some way how to eliminate this traffic with some different technology. But it's yeah, it's only in future. Yeah. Well, the technology is called police. You know, <laughs> you can just stop them, and nobody nobody gets into the road. All right. Um, I know, Marcus, that this was the very first time for you riding in this virtual reality in, in Ruby. Uh, you still have plenty of people around you. You cannot get rid of them or what is happening? No, really, it's, I try to go hard more than uh, 4 watt per kilogram, but it uh, still stays there. Now, I mean, it's a, it's a good system because that uh, that the guys uh, implement that if you go faster that it's dragging you back and if you have to catch up that it helps you a little bit to stay in the group is uh, is a nice tool yeah well hopefully it helps everyone to get through this uh, winter season uh, we'll be heading heading back on the roads after the snow melts here here in europe obviously but uh, keep riding on this in this omni mode and uh, keep following the new features i mean every week as yuri said every week you will have new route coming in this omni mode but also that augmented reality is available so you can ride uh, every day uh, marcus saying that this was the first time you riding uh, in this ruby uh, ruby app can you see yourself riding back home <laughs> no for, um, for now not um, i'm i'm quite tired now i must say but uh, was was a lot of fun and uh, I'm looking forward for my next uh, ride on Ruby. Well, your three kids would be surprised seeing you on the bike on the home training, right? Yeah, for sure, for my kids. Uh, but also it would be interesting for them to see um, the real roads. Uh, if, like if I mentioned to, if it's possible in the future that you film your own roads in your own, your own climbs in your home area. And uh, uh, then then you get always the feeling, okay, this I know, and there's this coming, and this coming, and this bring will bring you through this uh, one hour much more faster. Yeah, well, I guess that Marcus just described the greatest advantage of uh, riding in virtual reality. So, uh, yeah, just bring more people in. Just bring more people, and uh, you can enjoy group riding together even from um, from your home. Uh, Marcus has like how many? Uh, three, four hundred meters to to go. Uh, he's almost there, and uh, he didn't drop too many, which is no shame because, as we said, this is a group ride. There, this is not a race. If you want to race, race tomorrow in uh, Black Forest. What are your memories on Schwarzwald? Uh, hard, hard racing, right? Yeah, and it's uh, what I said before the the Texas Pass. What we the second climb, what we did. I had the memory is that I was suffering a lot on this climb, and the climb is uh, called Texas Pass because it's really hot there, and the climb is hard. So I got some uh, pain memories back. And I guess that you got pain memories from today, from the Texas Pass, which was the uh, which was the second pass you we, you were now climbing, and you are in the end of this uh, ride. So uh, congratulations, everyone. And thank you very much for, for joining. Uh, thank you very much, Marcus, for um, joining BMS headquarters here in Ruby. And it was great pleasure riding with you, ladies. Pleasure, chapeau, for uh, finishing this. George, very nice, very nice effort. And uh, we will close this, um, close, this, close this group ride in the studio. So see you in a second, all right? So I was leaving at the fit room where all the five riders were suffering today and they named this uh, one hour ride um, 
group suffer ride. So I hope you didn't suffer too, too much. Uh, it was 28 kilometers and even more coming up tomorrow with that racing in uh, Black Forest, which is one of the events uh, Ruby is uh, arranging and organizing for, um, for users of Ruby virtual reality. Um, Jakub, can you tell us what other events uh, you plan for the winter so everyone can get kind of excited for what is coming up? So the, the closest days are uh, Tuesdays and Wednesdays when you have uh, another opportunity to race. Uh, this time it, it, it won't be a group ride, right? it, it'll be a race. And then the, one of the, our biggest hero campaign is coming, uh, which is at the end of November. Uh, 24th uh, till 27th, uh, we call it Winter Triathlon Festival uh, with stars like Magnus Ditlev and Frederick, Frederick Funk and, and others. Uh, you would be able to, to ra race against uh, them and compete uh, uh, on the triathlon courses uh, in partnership with Challenge Family. And also the first two weeks in December, uh, we have uh, Love World, a festive uh, edition. So a lot of racing, a lot of events uh, before the end uh, of the year. Uh, and uh, even the spring classics uh, are usually, uh, you know, April. Uh, we starting uh, we starting mid of mid of January. Uh, so Flanders, uh, Lutig, Baston Lutig, and others. Uh, the taste of them uh, are with us. So stay tuned. Yeah, that's excellent news riding on cobbles there. Uh, and I guess uh, what is very important for you guys, just um, if you didn't catch that QR code on the screen to send feedback and questions, that's actually what Ruby guys really need now, so they know where to push uh, this, not only Omni mode, but other features forward, right? Absolutely, absolutely. So let us know. Uh, today there were almost 400 riders registered, uh, so well done to, to all of you. Uh, and once again, thanks for uh, pushing the pedals hard. Thank you for watching, guys. Enjoy riding. Ciao. Cheers.